Some thoughts on multiplying by multiples of 10. Today on social media, there was a great question. When you know for students to say, quote, adding a zero is not mathematically correct, but the students are saying it when they're multiplying by multiples of 10, how can you help? So I think the biggest question is, how do you know when the students really understand the concept? Not just that they know the right thing to say, but you can tell that they really understand it. So let's look at it. Let's do that for a minute. So for this example, pretty basic. You have four times one. Now it's very important to stress that each of these cubes represents one. So what happens when I say four times 10? Well, I'm hoping that if students are multiplying by multiples of 10, that they understand place value because that should be earlier. And so they know that we're a base 10 system and when we have 10 is when we regroup. So when you have four times 10, you actually have four times one 10, and so you get four tens as your answer. And what is happening is the four, you still have four of something, but instead of four ones, you now have four tens. Now you can't just write this four if it's tens. So why do you have to change that? Because that doesn't look like four tens. So students then start to realize I'm actually moving the digit to a new place value. And so I have to have a zero to represent that I have no ones because now I have four tens. I don't have any ones. Okay, let's look at a different example. Might be a little more clear. So still with this example, I still have my cube only represents one. So, but here I have three groups of two. Okay, but what if that changes and now I have, instead of three times two, I have three times 20. One of the ways that I think is helpful for students is to say, okay, you have three times, but you actually have two tens. And sometimes I will have them write out the word. That becomes really important in fourth grade, by the way. So three times two, so I have six of something, but what I have is six tens. And think of it this way. If you had three sets of um, pencil boxes, but each pencil box had two pencils, you'd have six pencils. If you had three um, sets of marbles and each group had two marbles, you'd have six marbles. So you're going to have six of something, but this is, now you know you have six tens. Okay. Well, you know, one question is, what if start, students start to notice that pattern and they get in the habit of saying, well, I'm just moving that zero or I'm just adding a zero and we correct them. I always say, well, four plus zero is four. It's not 40. But at, if you're doing that, what's the harm? Like, why, why can't we just let them do that even though it's not mathematically correct? Is there a problem? So if you haven't read it, there is a great NCTM article, 13 Rules That Expire. It's from Teaching Children Mathematics, August 2014. You can't access it unless you're an NCTM member, but if you are, you can go back and look. 
It's a great article. It talks about misconceptions that students start to develop and when they expire. And this particular misconception expires in fifth grade when they start to multiply decimals. So let's look at this. Notice that now my one small block represents one tenth and not one. So I have one tenth times four equals four tenths. Okay. But what happens now that I have this new problem and I have one tenth times 40. Well, if I use the strategy of I'm just going to multiply and use what I have here and then just add a zero to it, then what I would get is this, which happens to be a pretty common misconception among fifth graders, but we know that that's not right because 40 hundredths is actually equal to 4 tenths. That doesn't work, and you can look at the picture and see it doesn't work. What does it equal? Well, you have you had 4 tenths. When you multiply it by 10, 10 times as much, if you think about changing the place value, it makes a little more sense. So now, instead of 4 tenths, you have 4 wholes. So that makes a little more sense. And let's go back and look at our problem with words. If we said 1 tenth times 4 tens equals. Well, we know we're going to have 4 of something. What are we going to have? Four of well, one tenth times ten is one. So you actually have four. Whoops, you have four ones. So that is a very brief example, and I hope that's helpful. But back to the original question: What do we expect students to say and do to show understanding of this concept? Well, I don't think there's one exact answer. I always like to question students so they discover the solution. So let's talk about some questions that I've used in the past. And once again, I'd love to hear what you've used in the past. But when students say 15 times 10 equals 150, and they say, well, it's just 15, and then you add a zero. Well, I ask them, well, how did you get 15? And they always say 15 times 1. So then I will say, well, 15 times 1 equals 15, and 15 plus 0 equals 15. So that's not 150. And then I just wait. And I'm not great at waiting, but I've practiced a lot over the years, and I think it's very important. So then they will eventually say, I didn't mean that they, I didn't mean to add a zero, I meant put a zero. And I'm like, well, so, okay, let's explain that. Let's use correct language. Why do you put a zero? Where do you put it? And then we have the conversation about how do you write four tens or 15 tens in a base 10 format, or sometimes they call it standard format, and why? So students will, in their own language, start to explain that they really have to have a zero in the ones place because otherwise it won't show that it's tens. But that's really important. And for those who are pretty adamant that no, this works every time, I'm just going to use this rule. Well, it's very important to question them because they're not going to remember if you just tell them or show them. And there's a lot of research about that. So questioning is really, really important. So how can you question them so that they reach a cognitive disequilibrium and they think, oh, 
my plan doesn't really work all the time. Well, in third grade, you're only using whole numbers. They haven't learned decimals. Um, and even though they haven't learned decimals, they do understand money. So for those students who are pretty set in their rule that they've discovered, that's incorrect, this is what I have done. Let's look at this problem. So what equation is represented? And some of them will try to start using a cent sign, but I tell them, no, let's not do that. Let's write it like this. See if this is true. 25 cents times 10. Well, what does that equal? That's $2.50. So if I write that without the money sign, this is what I get. Did their rule work? And just have a conversation until they start to understand that really what has changed is the value of the digit. And so here's another one. You can look at 10 cents or a dime, 10 dimes. So it is really challenging um, and it takes a lot of time to question students so that they discover it and they are able to explain it in their own language. But I really believe it is well worth the effort. When they discover this rule and are able to explain it conceptually, it not only helps them in the moment, but it helps them as they start to learn new and more challenging concepts later on. So thank you so much. I have created a blog post because this is a really important topic. So please go and share your ideas. When we all work together, it'll be so much easier than trying to do it alone. So thanks for participating. Love to hear your ideas. Thanks so much. Have a great day.